Good morning. This is Ramblings of an Indisciplined Podcast for Friday, February 5th, 2015. I thought what I'd do today, since I am home and I can like be looking at things while I'm doing the podcast, it's not really advisable when I'm driving, uh, I would go through some comments. So today I'm going to go through some comments. Um, before I do, let me point out, let me remind you, Sierra's still missing, so be keeping her in your thoughts and prayers. All right, so I, I've gotten a number of comments. Most of them are from my friend Gary, but I, I got you know another one that's from somebody else. So I thought what I'd start to do is, because some of these, I'm not really good at getting on the blog and responding. I've done some of these uh, on the blog, but it's been a little while, and I usually kind of let them stack up, and oh, i got to go back and, and do some responses because I don't want to be that guy. And I thought, you know, I probably decided I should just do them on the podcast since they're really kind of responses of the podcast. And I'll continue the, continue the conversation in an audio format. So here we go. The first one is one I got from David Collins R- Rivera. I think I screwed that. David Collins Rivera. All right. Uh, he's a, another patio books author. He did the uh, patio books Motherlode and Street Candles. You might recall I, I uh, did a review on those many, many months ago and liked them so if you're looking for science fiction uh podcast patio book go to pottybooks.com look for either david collins rivera or look for mother load or street candles and you'll find things you need to do but he commented that the sound quality in the new recording studio is wonderful you might be hugging the mic a bit but that's a nitpick Probably wrong. My ears could be clogged with the flu. You have upped your game, my friend. And I thanked him for that. I did respond to that one because he says there's nice things. I am still dialing things in here. I actually spent a little bit of time uh, before I started recording today trying to get um, the sound levels where I want them. Um, I'm actually I'm actually a little bit further now than I was on the episode that that he was commenting on. He was commenting on my one about the cowboy code, and. Uh, that one, I, I wasn't hugging the mic as much. I was probably about six inches away from it, but I, I was I was hot. I could tell I was hot. I was I kept popping the, uh, the the levels down on my little digital recorder here, so I knew I was about hot, and that's what he was hearing. So I'm still trying to dial it in. You know, like today, I've adjusted things a bit. I'm sitting about my mouth is probably about a foot from the microphone. So we'll see. Hopefully, that's better. But. Uh, Thanks, David, for writing in. I really appreciate that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from most recent to oldest, and then that way I can just stop when I feel like I've been talking long enough. So this one comes from my friend Gary. And he's commenting on on the episode I did called, are these in order? What order are these in? Yeah, okay, these are these are uh, in that. Um He's commenting on episode 408, Reboot Media. And he says, I'm getting I'm getting worn out with remakes and reboots. Some things just need to be left alone. I've lost count how many times Carrie has been made and remade. And don't get me started on the rumors I'm hearing about Labyrinth. There are so many good stories that would make great films. Given the technology available, many of those are totally doable now. Give me Rama! So yes, we're in the same camp with Rama. Want to see Rama. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of cool cool things. I mean, if you just want to kind of go with the, with some of the older sci-fi, uh, we got, uh, in addition to Rama, and I'm all behind a good Rama movie. I think I've discussed that. But also, uh, Larry Niven's Ringworld would be kind of cool. Um, yeah, especially... I, I'm actually really surprised with Ringworld. If you have go look it up. But it's basically... It's basically a world that looks like Halo, the world, you know, the ring in Halo. Uh, you know, that I'm, you know, I'm sure it was inspired to some degree or other by Larry Niven's Ring World. If, even if it was only that, that Larry Niven inspired something else, if they, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they took as the basis for that. It's not the military sci-fi shoot 'em up that Halo is, but the world itself is, is, um, it's that kind of world. So, uh, Ringworld's kind of like um, Rama mixed with Halo, but without the fighting. So, yeah, I think there, I think there's lots of good stuff out there. There's lots of good stuff out there, uh, and there's lots of good new stuff out there. 
Um, I, you know, it's kind of surprising that one of the newer greats, uh, Neil Gaiman, uh, I don't know that we've got any movies based on his stuff. I've read a few of his things. I need to, I need to read more. Um, I know Corpse Bride was based on his, I think. No, I'm sorry, Caroline, I think was based on his. He's got like, but that was like an animated thing. Um, they're, they're, you know, if you've read, if you read graphic novels, uh, I'm sure there's lots of people been clamoring for the Sandman series, and that would be really cool. That would be one that it would be neat if they did it animated. I would go see that. I would go see that stuff. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, although, I, I don't know why. For some reason, I'm strangely looking forward to the, the reboot of, of Ghostbusters. I don't totally, don't totally know why, but it just sounds interesting to me. Uh, and then he commented, uh, Gary commented on episode four, 414, which was talking about my book list, what I was going to read. And he said, I started reading Mistborn this weekend after, and, and like it after just a couple chapters. The only problem I see is that my digital library only lends for two weeks at a time, and there is a waiting list for this book. I need to step up my game a little to read this in that time. And yeah, those, those books take a little bit to get through. They're worth it, um, but they're not... I mean, depending on how much time you have to read, you know, they're, they're not something you're going to probably sit down and read in a weekend um, with, you know, kind of a normal amount of time. So, yeah, that's that's the bad thing about libraries. I, I just took two books out of the library. I've talked about The Goblin Emperor, and then there's another one from Kevin J. Anderson, whose name I forget. And, you know, The Goblin Emperor is a pretty, pretty decent-sized book, and the other one is even thicker. So I, our library actually gives us three weeks, so I'm hoping that I can get through, uh, well, at least get through Goblin, and hopefully, because I picked it up off the shelf, hopefully I can renew the other one if I have to. And then Gary left me an episode on episode 399, Ned Stark was right. Um, I don't know what exactly what to say. What seed did you use for your random generator this morning? That might have been when I was screwing up the dates. Um, P.S. I was drinking Earl Grey tea before the bald captain made it popular. Great stuff, that. Yeah, I got to say, I wasn't, I mean, before, before, you know, Star Trek Next Generation, you know, I basically knew of one kind of tea, Lipton. <laughs> and so... I will say I tried Earl Grey because Picard ordered it. And the first time I had it, I hated it. But at the time, I wasn't drinking coffee. I, I used to be I didn't like coffee. And and I kind of I, – I actually taught myself to like coffee just because we went places and there was free coffee. And I'm like, there's all these free beverages I could be getting because uh, I like drinking beverages. I, I usually feel like I have to be drinking something pretty much all the time. And I'm not that big a fan of water, just plain water. I like some flavor of some kind. And, and yeah, every place we went, there was like free coffee. It's like, what the heck? So I kind of learned, I kind of taught myself to like coffee. And then once I got liking coffee, I went, and, and later on, I tried Earl Grey again, and I, and I really liked it. So, so yeah, that's great. Uh, another comment from Ramblings episode 397, Typical Monday. Where I was talking about Bowie's passing. He says, one of my favorite Bowie performances is one he did with Mick Jagger, Dancing in the Streets. The video was just them dancing and singing, but it looked like they had a great time doing it. I also liked him in Labyrinth. I remember joking about him stealing Tina Turner's wig for that role. I, yeah, I forgot about that video until until you mentioned it, Gary. And I remember that. I remember really liking that version, too. I haven't heard it in a long time. And then when later on I heard... Um, so I, Probably the original version, I was like, eh. I, I, there's that version, and then there's Van Halen did a version, which I, I'm not sure if it came before this. I'm kind of thinking it came after this, but I'm not totally sure. Um, I like those two versions, but the original, I was kind of like, yeah, not, not liking that all that much. Uh, let's see. Okay, here um, from Gary again. Seriously, if you're listening to this, you need to leave me comments so that it doesn't sound like I'm um, favoring Gary all the time. 
because I think I want to, if I see, keep getting comments, I'm going to make this a regular thing. Every now and then, I'll, I'll, uh, once they pile up, I'll, I'll do a set of comments. Um, so we're talking about, this is episode 396, which was when I was talking about Childhood Zen, <clears throat> the TV series. Uh, he had just started watching at that time. The scene where he was picked up was rather impressive. And then he said, I'd be rather happy if they did Rama and, as well. So yeah, there, there were some really cool bits about that. And um, there were some things, you know, that I wasn't totally on board with. But I, I was happy that they, they kept the, um, the Overlord's appearance. I could see where somebody else might have decided to change that, and they didn't. So that was cool. Let's keep on going here. Ramblings episode 387, Pirate Carols 3. Oh, yeah, Pirate Carols. That was a lot of fun to do. Um, he says, Oh, Captain Gizmo, you have outdone yourself this time around. All these songs are great. Pirate Lads is my favorite. Maybe you should think about recording an album. It's funny that Pirate Lads was his favorites because Pirate Lads was, um, it was the first one I came up with, but I, I, I really enjoyed doing the Mr. Grinch one. Uh, that one took really the most time to, um, to prepare um, from, from the lyric standpoint and then just recording it. It took me, it took me a bit of time, but yeah, they're all fun to do. I, I love doing those. I didn't get much of a response uh, from Pirate Carol 3, except for this, but, uh, I've gotten more responses in the past, but it was, you know, I, I had to remind myself, because it's been a while since I, since I've done these things, I had to remind myself why I do them, and it's not necessarily because I've got 10 or 15 or whatever people that go, this is awesome, or in this case, one, um, not two, I think the wife said something, but, uh, you know, I, I do them because they make me laugh, because I find them funny. Uh, so, yeah, that was fun to do. That was fun to do. And it was, I, I specifically wanted to get the recording studio here in a position where I could use it just because I knew I was going to do that. I, I didn't say that because I wanted it to be a bit of a, a, bit of a Christmas surprise. Arr, I had to get in the pirate voice there. I was talking about pirate carols. Oh, let's see. Episode 386, The Masters, where I was talking about the masters of sci-fi writing. And Gary says, Clark is my favorite out of that bunch, especially the Rama series. I like the way each book revealed a little bit more of the mystery. I even played a video game based on one of the books. Ooh, I should look for that, although it'd probably be kind of crap now. I don't even know if you could play it, but that would be cool. Um, he was very good at writing about science that was plausible and seemed likely to come about at some point. So yeah, I've, I've, I've read um, a number of, I don't know that I've read everything. I should probably actually go back and look at his catalog and see what I may have missed. Um, I, I, you know, I mean, I've read, I've read all the books that were based on the 2001 a Space Odyssey. You know, so obviously 2001, which I think was more of a novelization of the script. And then 2010 and was it 2061 I think it was um, and then there was the fountains of heaven um, Chad Hudan obviously Rama um, ba, 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 ba. yeah I forget I, I'm sure there's other stuff of his that I've read but I'm not sure what off the top of my head what there are but I should look and see if there's stuff I missed uh, for that minute so episode 385 fooled I guess I was talking about fooling people and when I got fooled I think uh, but Gary writes, my favorite trick to play on my daughter was sending her on a scavenger hunt to find her big gift. I would wrap up a clue in a box, and once she solved it, it would point to where the next clue was hidden. Looking forward to doing that with any grandkids we may have. Uh, yeah, that's something we've done in the past. And actually, my, my niece and nephew on the, on the in-laws side have kind of taken to, to doing that to somebody almost every year. So I think it was this year... Um, I think it was Laura, if I remember correctly. And they had her going all over the house, the my in-laws place, you know, in the basement, you know, all over the darn place. Uh, they did it to me. Well, actually, they did it slightly. It varies what he's going to do. So, so, so this year, this last year, they did the scavenger hunt. The year before, I think it was me, whatever it was me, it was like last year or the year before that. So 2014 or 2013, they gave it to me. And they just had 
boxes within boxes within boxes within boxes. And it was kind of on a 12 Days of Christmas theme. And, you know, so you, so some of these gifts were just like crud they found around the house. Like, you know, some, some nuts and bolts and a few pennies and, and all this. And, and you get to the last little box that was in the mid, at the bottom of all this mess. And uh, it was like a Best Buy gift card. <laughs> And I started off with this big honker box, so it was it was fun. I need my knife because he's 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 not wrapping in in paper. He was like wrapping in duct tape. So yeah, it was uh, it took a little bit to cut through. All right, episode three eighty four Christmas cards. We still send a few cards each year. Gary says mostly to family and a few friends we don't otherwise talk to much. My wife always sent a card and letter to her favorite teacher from high school. After he died, she still exchanges a card and letter with his wife. She's always been one to try to preserve the list um, of personal notes and cards. So, yeah, that's something we're not very good at. We haven't been doing Christmas cards for a while. That's what I was talking about that day. That was my last comment for January. That takes me all the way back through January. And I'm at 16 and a half minutes. So I'm thinking maybe I'll stop there. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to be on the next comments episode, which will be, I don't know, it depends on how many I get, uh, feel free to leave a comment. You can leave it. I don't care where you leave it. Leave it on the Penslinger blog. Leave it on the uh, Ramblings of a Discipline Mind blog. Tweet me. Email me. All of that nonsense. Um Put it on the, on the uh, if you're on one of my pa Facebook pages, like if you're on the Keith Hughes Penslinger Facebook page, um, you could do that. Put it there. Uh, so just put it, put it someplace. Put it someplace, and then I'll I'll store it up and store it up and uh, make it part of the next comments video. But let's see. Today's Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday. I'm gonna to try to do an episode, but eh, maybe not. We've got we're only gonna be here about half the day, and I do have schoolwork I want to get done in the morning and some a few short chores. So if I get busy and forget about it, then there's a possibility there won't be one on Saturday. But I will definitely be back on Monday. So either way, I'll be talking to you then. So be seeing you. <laughs>